Hi, I'm Jeff. This is Tropical Plants at 53 degrees north. Now, the good news is the sun's out today. It's 30 degrees. The bad news is that it's only going to last today and tomorrow we're back to full cloud cover and probably rain. Who knows? But today I want to talk about begonias. Now, if you think you know begonias, chances are that you don't. You probably only know two types and that's what I'm going to talk about today and show you the progress that my tropical begonias have made over the last month. Let's jump in. And we are in now. We're starting off with a little look here at my begonia, well, Gryphon, Gryphon, I don't know how you pronounce it. I've been calling it Gryphon, like Python. Um, I don't know, I've heard people calling it Gryphon. So we'll, we'll stick with Gryphon for a bit and see, see whether anybody comes up with anything different. So that's my begonia griffon. Now it has bloomed and the blooms I promptly cut off once I'd seen what they were like. It's obviously not grown for that, it's grown for the spectacular foliage. And I know I've shown you this before, but if you get up close to it and you look at the, if I can just manage to squeeze in here, not easy, but I think we'll take it out and hope that we don't cause any damage. Yikes, that's a tight squeeze. So if you look at the, the stems there and the foliage underneath, that lovely bronze foliage, it really is a nice plant. Um, it will go anywhere really at the back of a, a border and I'm classing my benches as borders here and it just kind of fits nicely over there. So I'll just pop it down for a little while while I talk about begonias in general. And there it is little bit windy out so basically when people talk about begonias I think what they are talking about certainly if you come from the UK is two types of begonias we're talking about the tuberous ones so they're the ones that go into like a dormancy period over the winter uh, most people put them in pots because of that reason and they have like big blousy flowers you get them in like reds and uh, oranges and various shades in between uh, whites and so on. The other begonias that people are used to seeing is Semperflorens, which is the bedding plant begonia and I'll be honest I probably prefer the tuberous one more than the bedding plant one but I'm not really that thrilled with either of them. I think famili familiarity breeds contempt doesn't it and if anybody said to me or would have said to me before I bought these these new types of begonia you're going to be going to be going growing begonias i would have said no you're wrong i don't even like them so um, just while i'm on isn't that nice just opened up but we're not doing orchids today we're doing begonias i'll come back to that so well, i want to show you these begonias that i i'm just trying to carefully not not reveal all just yet so the first one these are the ones that i unboxed exactly one month ago. So this one is the one that lots of you were familiar with, Maculata whitei. And when the new leaves come out on this, and you can see that fantastic red underneath, when the new leaves come out on this, they're like a bronzy colour. So that one on the left was completely bronze when it come out, and it's developed more into a green colour now. So that's just four weeks growth. Now there are roughly about six, seven, types of begonia now the, this is not like a scientific type this is the american begonia society what they've done is they've kind of loosely grouped them together in i suppose what you would call features of each um, this one is maculata so i think this one is probably uh, like a rhizomatous begonia in which case it's not going to go very big probably about 20 30 centimeters and it really doesn't like to be over potted so I don't expect it to go in much too bigger pot than that. I quite like this one, it's not my absolute favourite, uh, again probably because it's quite common um, but I, I mean I hadn't seen one before but from what I've read lots of people do have this one so let's put that one down and look at some of the others and we'll talk about some more of the care. Now I found that probably the best 
thing with the begonias or the best feature for me is the new young growth if you can really kind of get up close to it and have a look underneath it there's quite a lot of detail to be seen in those leaves so this one is sea urchin and it, if you look at like photos of sea urchin when it's more mature it really doesn't look like it looks now uh, as, as a young plant uh, this one is beginning to develop now it's beginning to take off and you can see those like really hurry new young leaves coming up there but the the mature leaves look quite different so i'll try and put a photo up but they look quite different to this so that's i'm kind of going up here in order of the ones that i prefer at the moment so this one we've said is sea urchin and i'll just check my notes because i forget so this one is probably from the rex group I'm not, you know, don't hold me to that, I'm not sure. I'll stick something up on the on the screen because I can't remember off the top of my head, um, just so that you know. And you've got that lovely, those lovely colours underneath. So begonias are fairly easy to look after in terms of um, if, you, if you want to keep them in a house because pretty much everything that they like you've got in a house. So they will grow for you all year round. These two that I've got here will, and I'm moving up working up to some of my more favorites as we work along um, but i might as well tell you a couple of things about them before i do so you can grow them in like a johnny's number two they prefer like a higher acidity like a rich compost in a smaller pot is preferable to a larger pot they do need humidity not a great deal of humidity but obviously in a house you tend to get none whatsoever so apparently according to the american begonia society that can be overcome simply by misting them giving them a quick mist once a day and that will do it that's all they really need i suppose you can try that trick where you kind of raise the pot on stones and put some water in there i don't know how effective that is but I've heard lots of people talking about that. Ventilation is also something that they prefer. In terms of lighting position, and I suppose, yeah, but just backtracking a little bit, ventilation might be an issue in the house. I suppose you can open a window. But uh, in terms of potting compost, yeah, we said a John Ennis number two with perlite is something that's been recommended, or even vermiculite. Uh, a weekly feed, just a general plant fertilizer will do it. And these particular varieties that I'm showing you now will grow all year round. They're not grown for the blooms, they're grown for the foliage, but they do make spectacular foliage plants, I think. So just before we talk about temperatures and so on, I might as well show you another one. So this one is Silver Jewel. Not quite my favourite. I don't think it's taken off quite as much as the others yet, but this one did get fairly bashed about in transit. Again, I will show you some either photos or a little bit of footage of what it looked like when it first arrived. Um, this one is supposed to be quite reflective and it, it does in certain light it does look quite reflective uh, there's not much to look at underneath that one like i say it's not really taken off yet so what have we talked about humidity and um, the light we've said i don't think we have actually uh, the light well they like bright light but not direct sunlight so if you can give them some kind of position where where they're getting bright light but they're not getting that behind glass sun direct sun because obviously pretty much no plant likes that i've got them in a quite a shady spot here uh, they're in the greenhouse on the it is on the sunny side but there's quite a few pieces of shade cloth on the outside there so they're definitely not in the direct sun so that one is silver jewel like i say it's just getting going but i'm coming to some of the others that have put on a lot more growth than this so that's a silver jewel so this one is a begonia listada and I think, I'm sure you'll agree, that one's looking much nicer now. And again, we talk about the, the new foliage and you can see how that new little leaf there is coming. It's looking rather attractive. And this kind of yellowy, I don't know what, what colour you call it, like a lime green or a yellowy splash down the middle really does catch the light at certain times. So this one is a cane variety, so this one will go taller and the cane varieties i believe do need more potting so even though most of the begonias are quite shallow rooted if you've got a cane variety and the griffon over here is a cane variety and that will need repotting because it's got a, a deeper root system the other more rhizomatous type begonias will they will need repotting every two or three years but you don't necessarily have to 
increase the pot size unless the you know the pot's clearly too small for the roots and it's really jam packed in there they don't respond well to over potting so that's list data i do like that one that's definitely coming nice okay and we're getting a little bit better now so this one is another cane variety this is begonia silver lace so this one we are getting into a little bit more of my favorites now i mean just look i don't know if you can see the hairs underneath there that's really attractive it looks more attractive i think um, in real life than it does on the camera but the top of it again the leaves are looking gorgeous and that new leaf there i can just do that one-handed very attractive yeah, i really like this one this is um, not a cane one this one is from begonia rex so I read somewhere that they said begonias are the impressionists of the plant world. They like to copy other plants because you've got begonia types that look like other various different plants. So this one is a fuzzy one that you can give it a little stroke and I'm coming to an even fuzzy one in a moment. So I like that one. That one's really taking off nicely. That one is silver lace. Now at the moment, because these are in Johninus number two and they've only been potted about a month, it's just less than a month actually as I film this, I haven't fed them yet, but I imagine in another couple of weeks stick something in there and start to feed. Okay, I'm moving up in terms of my favourites. So this one is Begonia Curly Fire Flush. Now you might have seen this one in photographs if you follow me on Instagram, and if you don't, have a look in the description and follow the link. And uh, what I particularly like, well, there's a lot that I like about this one. I particularly like the new young growth. I mean, just look at that leaf. I mean, tell me you don't want to stroke that. It is such a furry, fuzzy, uh, red-haired leaf. It's quite bizarre. I don't think I've ever seen anything like that. It's very attractive. Uh, no wonder there's, it's got the word fire in the, in the title, curly fire flush. Oh, that is a lovely one. I'm really impressed with that one. Okay, so as we put curly fire flush to one side, just have another look at that red leaf and all the hairs on it. So, next to it, we have the definitely uh, an imposter. This one looks for all the world like a fuchsia. And that's why this one is called Begonia fuchsioides. So this is the plant we are looking at. Let's pick that one up. And everything about it, from the flowers, to the upright habit, to the leaves, it looks like a fuchsia, but it's not, it's Begonia. So obviously this is a cane-like variety. And let's do a little close up on the flowers there. Um, I'm, I'm not that happy with the flowers. I don't think they're that spectacular. However, this is only the first or the start, I should say, of what this plant will look like. Now, the, the most attractive photographs I've seen of this plant, and I've read all sorts of articles that really praise this plant as either a, a like a summer bedding plant or in well in, in a, a situation like i've got in here where i can grow it actually all year round because i can keep my temperatures above 12 degrees and while we're talking about temperatures all these begonias that i'm showing you today because they are all tropical and subtropical species some of them because there's such a variety in begonias some of them will go down to almost frost level but i'm going to keep them at 12 degrees celsius that's going to be the minimum and they are kept out of the sun uh, and today it has actually gone up to 35 in here but that is definitely a one-off now the thing about fuchsioides is that the best examples i've seen are when it is a multi-stemmed plant and i've seen quite a lot of photographs where the, there's not just this one single cane coming up there's several now my question is how do i get it to produce those multi stems now, I've not been able to find anything. If anybody knows, by all means, stick it in the comments there. I'd love to hear what other people who have perhaps grown it think about how to do that. But because these are so easy to propagate, what I intend doing is pinching out the growing tip. Now, by doing that, obviously it's gonna bush up, but I don't want that necessarily. I mean, not that I don't want that, I do want that to happen, but I want it to start pushing some growth from below the soil level. Now, when you do that with other plants, certain plants anyway, if you pinch out the growing tip, very often they do push something up from the bottom. I'm thinking of Wandering Jew does that in particular, um, and I can't think of any other way of doing that. And because they're so easy to propagate, they propagate from like nodal uh, cuttings, just like tip cuttings, and just remove the leaves, um, 
just I, I can't point this out but you know you know the routine it, you, you just remove the bottom few leaves and cut it just below a leaf node and that's where the new roots are going to come from so what I thought to do is kill two birds with one stone I will take a tip cutting to make this brush to make it bush out a little bit more and to hopefully get it to produce some growth from below the surface and I will use that tip cutting to propagate it and have more of these plants. It will grow to about one and a half meters but it's going to need to be in a bigger pot than that. So that is Begonia fuchsioides. So you can see that's grown quite considerably. That's probably about 40 centimeters tall now. Which brings me to my final one of the day. So this one is Luxurians. Now this one has put quite a lot of growth on it's not as tall but if I pick it up I mean you can see why it's called a palm leaf begonia it really is very tropical looking I love it I love the shape and everything it's a bit bizarre because it has like these leaves coming from the center as well center of that leaf so like baby leaves coming from the from the other leaves um, the new growth is quite bronzy looking and the stems are quite red Mine were red when they arrived, but now they seem to be turning red. But it is very, very sturdy and rigid. And it does drink quite a lot of water as well. So I imagine it won't be long before I'm going to have to repot that one. I can just see it in the corner there, just like growing to about two metres tall. I think that will be really nice. So that one is, at the moment anyway, my favourite, I think. Favourite or second. It's run close close favorite along with this curly fire flush I really like the young growth on there so we will see so my next job is I'm going to pinch that out I think I might wait for it to grow a little bit taller and then I'll because I, I don't really I would pinch it about there I don't want to lose those flowers um, they're nice colors anyway it's a nice they're like little hearts if we can see that there very attractive so when that grows a little bit taller pinch it out and we will see if I can get that to turn into a multi-stemmed plant so that's my begonias so what have we got there one two three four five six seven eight and the one on the floor there nine and that one can go back in its place over there just behind that phragmopedium so yeah that's my begonias so if you've got any information about begonias that you want to add into the comments i'd love to hear what other people think about these plants um, I definitely wasn't aware that there were so many varieties and if you get yourself onto I think it's Dibley's website um, you will see plenty more not just the ones that I've got and, and they're all so different and so attractive and they make a really good addition I think they complement the orchids okay they might not have all have flowers on I know the Fuchsioides does but they might not all have flowers on but they really do add to the display I think and once they get going and once they really start to get bigger I think they're going to add even more and for now I will see you on the next one bye